What do you look for in your assault rifle? Power, usability, efficiency? Or perhaps you're looking for something with a bit more style. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this Mastery Rank 8 primary weapon, the Stradavar. I'm gonna be covering a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a ribbon. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of this stuff, then please, have a little patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Stradavar. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that I'm simply gonna be taking a couple of free shots. Now this is roughly 15 meters away from the wall. You have two fire modes, first of all automatic. Now in auto mode you have a pretty good rate of fire as you can see the recoil is quite manageable. Unfortunately the accuracy isn't really there, it kinda sprays all over the place. If you press alt fire you will switch to semi mode and you're going shot by shot and the accuracy as you can see is a whole lot better. Other than that, not much more to say, it's an automatic rifle with two fire modes. Let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and if your Stradivar only has 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in an Auto King Catalyst. The Auto King Catalyst can be found from alerts, invasions or, if you're lucky, from the daily sortie. As an alternative measure, you can pay 20 plat to have one plugged in. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 5 times, but this was done for the purpose of testing. By default, the Stradivar comes with 2 V symbols, which is a huge advantage, you're not gonna have to sync more than 2 Forma into this one. Next, we're gonna have to look at both of the fire modes. Primary, accuracy 14.3, and you get double for the secondary mode. Critical chance is 24% for primary with a multiplier of 2.0, and we got 28% crit chance for the secondary with the same multiplier of 2.0. Fire rate is 10 for primary, as for secondary you only get 5, so you have a higher crit chance, unfortunately the fire rate gets cut in half. Magazine is 65 and reload 2.0 for both fire modes of course, not a lot of downtime out of the Stradivar and the reload is bearable for the most part. Riven disposition 4 out of 5, we don't have many members of the Stradivar family, just one and unfortunately this weapon is not very popular. Status chance is 12% for primary fire, as for alternative fire you got 16%. Next we're gonna take a look at damage because they are different depending on fire modes. The secondary fire as you can see will deal a lot more damage than the primary fire and of course the uh, types are disposed a bit differently. For the primary fire impact, puncture and slash have pretty much the same value so if you wanna tip the scales in favor in one of them, let's say slash for example you can add fang fusillade which will put the slash way over impact and puncture. As for the secondary fire, this is not the best alignment. Puncture is highest which is not bad. Puncture currently in Warframe, from my point of view at least, is the best uh, physical type in the game because it deals 50% extra damage to armored targets. Slash is also amazing and can be amazing in a slash build. Unfortunately, there is a pretty big gap between puncture and slash. Even with Fang Fusillade, I'm not getting the slash over the puncture. And Fang the Lord, impact is lowest on secondary fire. And that's pretty much it. Let's start slapping on some mods, starting with mandatory mods. And there's nothing more mandatory than serration, 165% extra damage. Next, we're gonna go to multi shot and we're gonna be applying split chamber with 90% multi shot as well as vigilante armaments with 60% multi shot. Multi shot means that at the click of a button, you're gonna be firing multiple projectiles. In our case, multiple bullets. 150% multi shot means that you have a guaranteed second bullet with each and every shot and a 50% chance at a third bullet. Now we're gonna go to crit chance and crit damage. As you probably guessed by now, this is the strong point of the weapon. Critical chance with point strike, 150% and crit damage with vital sense. Our crit chance for primary fire is 60%, secondary fire 70% and of course the multiplier is the same for both at 4.4x. Next we really gotta decide what exactly do we want to do with a weapon because you can build it for elemental damage or you can build it for bleeds and we're gonna talk about a bleed build later, first let's go into elemental damage. 
Elemental damage should always be applied on a weapon depending on where you're going and who you're fighting. For example, if you're fighting Corpus Faction, these guys have big shields and against big shields you can use magnetic damage or a smarter idea would be to build gas or toxin which bypasses their shields entirely and deals damage to their health. If you're up against the infested, there's a lot of them but they're pretty weak, I would recommend AoE weapons heavily modded into heat. The infested can be a little bit tricky because they have four health types, each with their own unique uh, vulnerabilities and resistances to damage, but for the most part you shouldn't really worry too much about them. The Grenier currently are recognized as being the toughest targets in Warframe and they have two armor types, Alloy which is weak to radiation damage and Ferrite which is weak to corrosive. Against Grenier, more often than not, your safest bet will be to build corrosive, which is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. So let's build some. Starting off with electricity, should I go for the 90 mods or for the 60-60 mods? For the Stradivar, throughout testing, the 60-60 mods have constantly performed better, so that's what I'm recommending. High voltage, this one can be a bit of a pain to get. It's farmable from the game, the mission is called Na'elgar, on the planet Eris. You'll have to find all the free secret caches, then upon extraction you got a 5% chance of getting high voltage or shell shock, which is the exact same mod, only for shotguns. I got my electricity, next I can go to Toxin and this one is a lot easier to get, it's called Malignant Force, 60% Toxin, 60% status chance, farmable from Corrupted Vore in the Void. I got a higher status chance now, 53.5%, just keep in mind that the base chance of the Stradavar is only 12% in primary and 16% in secondary. It did went up not only because of the two 60-60 mods but also because of all the multi-shot we slapped on the weapon, this adding shot status chance and this adding true status chance. We still have one more mod slot left on the weapon and this is what I like to call the option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel comfortable with. Here are a couple of worthy options. Shred, fire rate and punch through or prime shred if you have that one. Punch through means that your bullets will be going through the initial target and keep traveling for 1.2 meters. Here's another good option. Hammer shot, yes I know it's a mean mod but come on guys don't be so mean. Hammer shot will give you critical damage and status chance. Let's keep in mind that the strong point of the Stradivar is crit chance and crit damage because the base status chance is awfully low. So hammer shot is not a mistake, it's not a bad idea but there are almost always better options than hammer shot. Here's another good option, unfortunately this one is a bit expensive, it's called Argon Scope. Currently on the trade chat for PC it's going for about 100, 130 plat. I'm not gonna recommend it in a new player build, however if you have this one then by all intents and purposes use it. Let's bring it back to how status chance and status procs work in Warframe. Keep in mind that the physical types, impact, puncture and slash have a 4 times greater chance of applying status over elemental types such as corrosive. So when you're looking at this and trying to figure out exactly what is the proc pecking priority, look at IPS times 4. And if you do that you will notice that at least for primary fire corrosive is the last one on the priority tied with slash. If you take a look at secondary it is the third one in the list, impact is a tad lower. So if I really want to proc corrosive I can add more electricity and toxins so I can get this value up. So let's do that. More electricity with Stormbringer, you can also add Infected Clip, it doesn't really matter which of the two, the results will be the same. You're adding Corrosive to the weapon for two reasons. First, it's status proc that will reduce enemy's armor so subsequent shots will be dealing more damage and the second reason is that Corrosive has a 75% damage bonus when hitting Ferrite armor and this is the primary reason we're building a whole lot of Corrosive. This is the first build I'm recommending to you guys and I do have a couple more but for a beginner build this should suit you quite nicely. We're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner, these guys are level 120 and they are equipped with Ferrite Armor. We're gonna go Automatic on the right and Semi on the left. And you will see that the Stradivar is fully capable of shredding one of these high level targets. The number of bullets it takes to take out a 120 Corrupted Heavy Gunner will depend highly on your status procs. The more corrosive procs you get, the fewer bullets you will require. Now let's switch to Semi. Now once again in semi mode we have higher status chance, higher crit chance and higher damage. What we don't have is fire rate, we only have a fire rate of 5.0. And I'm not sure if you're noticing this but the recoil is quite different as well. This is a bit of a jumpy recoil and it makes the weapon a bit less usable. Certainly nothing out of the ordinary, I mean it's not horrible, it's just a lot less optimal to use. It does suffer a little bit in usability, opposed to this which of course is a lot more comfortable. 
I tested the weapon in survival missions for about, I don't know, an hour, something like that, and I always found myself going back to automatic mode simply because it was a whole lot more simpler to use. Semi mode is extremely good when you're dealing with lower level targets, if you're the kind of precision player that gets one shot, one kill, then by all means go for semi. As you can see, it absolutely shreds. You just gotta get a little bit lucky with those status procs, because again, the base status chance is only 12% on auto and only 16% on semi. It is slightly higher, but it's definitely not great. Once again, this is the beginner build I'm recommending to you guys. What we're gonna do next is switch to a bleed build. And I kept my mandatory mods, Serration, Split Chamber, Point Strike and Vital Sense. I'm not calling Vigilante Armaments mandatory, but you will be getting some nice value not only out of the 60% multi-shot, but also out of the set bonus. 5% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Now don't get me wrong, it's not that big of a deal, but it still should be mentioned. You will be getting some crit ups. Next, how do we build Slash on the Stradivar? We have two options, we can either use the weapon's innate Slash value or we can use the ever so popular Hunter Munitions. If we were to go for the weapon's innate Slash value, first thing we gotta do is increase its value with Fang Fusillade, 120% extra Slash. Now, my Slash is highest on primary, unfortunately on secondary it's still not higher than Puncture. That means that Puncture will still have a higher priority. We're gonna try it out like this first and of course when building a weapon for Slash it's a smart idea to build Viral Damage. Viral on a status proc will uh, reduce the maximum health of an enemy to 50% for the duration of the Viral proc. The problem with a build such as this is that the Viral proc can slip off the target before it bleeds out so there is that to take into account. Let's build some Viral, which is the elemental combo between Cold and Toxin. Should we go for the 90 mods or for the 60-60 mods? We're gonna go for the 60-60 mods. Not because we want more Viral apps. Again, one, two good ones will be more than enough in the case of Viral. However, my slashes will be coming through the weapon's status chance. So, 60-60 mods. Rhyme rounds for Cold. As for Toxin, same as before, Malignant Force, and we're gonna be testing the weapon out like this. I got my Viral, I got my Slash, let's see what the weapon is capable of. Now let's get one thing clear, I'm not recommending this build, I'm simply showcasing it. A huge part of what I do is testing and disproving popular myths. Now let's go for straight headshots on the target on the right, I'm gonna empty a full clip, this is auto, and then we're gonna go to semi for the target on the left. I only got about 50-60% of the target's health with damage and as you can see it wasn't even close to dying. That is because I'm not really getting all that many slash procs on the target. I don't have a good enough status chance. So going through viral with increased status chance and getting Fang Fusillade on the weapon simply doesn't yield that great of a result. But if I switch to semi, here I have a lot more damage, a slightly better status chance, though my puncture will proc more than the slash. However, you will see that the target took a whole lot more damage from a lot less bullets, though there's still not that many slashes on the goddamn target. This build simply does not work and I do not recommend it. Now, if you really must have a uh, slash build on the Stradivar, there is a surefire way to get one that really kicks some ass. And we're gonna get rid of Fang Fusillade, Rhyme Rounds and Malignant Force. We're gonna get our slashes through the ever so popular Hunter Munitions. Now, when you're building a weapon for hunter munitions, you gotta keep in mind the condition. You gotta crit in order to have that 30% chance to apply a slash status to an enemy on critical hit. In comes more crit. How do I get more crit? Critical delay. Guys, I've seen some of your comments. Stop it. Critical delay is simply not a very good mod. It can work on certain weapons. For example, you can align the fire rate to the recoil on the Snipetron Vandal with critical delay. But in general, this is simply underpowered. It's not worth the trade-off. It's only 40 8% crit chance at the cost of 36% fire rate, so bear that one in mind. For crit we're gonna be using Argon Scope, once again this one on the trade chat on PC, about 130 plat, it's more than worth getting this one. And we're not gonna stop here, we're also gonna be adding bladed rounds, we're going heavily into crit chance so we can proc more slashes and bladed rounds will increase the value of my slashes. The problem I take with bladed rounds, it's an on kill effect, I'm a bit biased towards it, I don't really like it, however it is a very powerful mod and let's be honest here, during a mission you're gonna be getting plenty of kills so you shouldn't really have a problem keeping the buff up and we're gonna be respawning once again the exact same targets now since I am using bladed rounds I'm gonna have to get a kill in order for the build to be in full swing but you will see that I'll be getting a lot more slashes on the target now than before 
look at that it's a christmas tree for the most part that is a whole lot more efficient and i got my bladed round buff now by the way the orange grits are because of vigilante armaments take a look at that now that is a whole lot better higher slashes and more slashes if you must have a slash build on the stradivar this is the way to go from my point of view, it works a little bit better, not a lot, just a little bit better uh, than the corrosive build we showcased first. And this will be semi, once again, just a couple of shots, I still got plenty of slash on the target. And take a look at the value in semi, the value of the slashes, of course. 1,256, that is definitely significant. Now keep in mind, there is no more viral on the target, I'm just going about it with brute strength. Now there's one more thing I want to do, check out a Riven setup, I know you guys like Rivens and I did manage to pick up one for a hundred plat, made, uh, met a nice person that gave me a pretty good deal, this one was worth a whole lot more than that. 106% multi shot and 171% critical chance, that bumps my crit chance to 101% on primary, as for secondary 118%. But of course I didn't stop there, I put Argon Scope on and I'm gonna get extra crit damage with Bladed Rounds. Basically this is the exact same uh, build as the Bleed build we showcased earlier. The only difference is that I swapped out Vigilante Armaments for the Riven. And we're gonna be testing the weapon out like this. Once again, this is a Dispo 4 weapon, so the Rivens will be quite potent. You can get your own Stradivar Riven for about 20 to 25 plat on roll. Head on over to Kuva and see if you can get a little bit lucky. And of course, with the Riven, I'm gonna be getting a lot more orange crits. And as you can see, the target is bleeding out completely, beautifully. And now I got my buff from Bladed Round, so the critical damage will go up by another 120%. The value of the bleeds, as you can see, is quite significant and I love this ribbon. And in general, I love using the Stradivar. It has a bit of style to it that other assault, assault rifles simply do not. Now let's switch to semi and test it out on the column on the left. And of course, a Dispo 4 Riven will make quite the difference. And if you're looking for the ideal stats, I know that some of you really are interested in this topic. Well, for a Stradivar, of course, I would go for crit chance and crit damage above mostly everything else because this is where the weapon shines. Just keep in mind that multi-shot and damage are never bad. If you're getting a element on your weapon, try to get something like Toxin or Cold so you can make Viral. If you're getting Toxin, that would be ideal from my point of view because you can make uh, Corrosive and you can also make Viral. So you can have multiple setups and just adapt depending on circumstances. One more thing before I go, pump up everything with Warframe buffs and for that I'm gonna need the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime. There we go, now she fits to the weapon. As for buffs, we're gonna be using Rifle Amp, 27% extra damage to rifles. This is an aura, so everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit, and it is stackable times 4. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. The best one you can get is Arcane Rage. On headshot, 10% chance for plus 120% damage to rifles for 16 seconds and the usual plus 1 Arcane Revive. You can farm this one from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. As for our second Arcane, I'm gonna go for Arcane Acceleration. This one will work really well for the alternative fire or the secondary fire. On critical hit, 20% chance for 60% fire rate rifles for 6 seconds. Unfortunately, I will have to content with that recoil. And this is the setup I'm gonna be recommending to you guys. Keep in mind that corrosive projection is guaranteed to give you better results if you know you're gonna be fighting Grenier, but Rifle Amp will grant its benefit regardless of the target. Now when you're rocking this much power, you can annihilate a target in just a couple of seconds, and as you can see, the Stradivar can pack one hell of a punch. Yes, we are running some- oh my god, that- just exploded. We are running some rather extreme Warframe buffs and we can get bleed procs up to 8000, now that is truly glorious. In general, I'm the type of player that prefers corrosive builds, but there's no denying the Stradivar works fantastically well with a high crit chance build through Hunter Munitions. And that's pretty much gonna conclude the Stradivar review. Is it worth the build? Absolutely, 120%. As always, my name is Bonlazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week as these reviews take quite a bit of time. But I will be reading through each and every comment. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.